Saints by four points and Locker kicked ten goals, seven. Dean Rice and David Rhys Jones, he was a mighty player, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, he was pretty hard to stop. And I, I watched the, uh, I remember um, Soss trying everything he possibly could to stop him, but he just couldn't stop him. So that was a big win for you guys. First time you'd beaten Carlton for five years. Yeah, and um, the problem in those days at St Kilda, you'd, you'd win a game like that, and you'd celebrate for the next four or five weeks, and uh, you lose those games. So. Of course, you never celebrated, Bruce. Well, we celebrated the losses, but uh, <laughs> it didn't, didn't really worry us too much. But. Um, yeah, look, it was a sensational effort. I mean, 17 shots at goal, 10 goals, 7. Uh, you know, just a superhuman effort. And, and St Kilda, you know, really got them on track the, for that year because... Uh, was he frightening, Lockett? Would you, would you start to hear his footsteps when he comes thundering out? Well, you, you'd know. He, he was a presence on the field, and, and everyone knew that. So if he, uh, if you were in the gap or, or where he didn't want you to be, he'd try and get you out of there. So uh, you had to keep your wits about you. Was it he wouldn't... the most frightening? Oh, no, look, there were there were plenty of guys, you know, when, when I started, there were Dittrich and Andrews and these sort of blokes running around, and they, they were pretty scary guys as well. It wouldn't wouldn't matter if you're the opposition. If you're a teammate and you got in the way, he'd still bowl you over. Well, the scoreboard did the right thing by you. I think at the end of the game, they put up the scores for, for race eight. Did you have, Would you have noticed that? I would have had a sneaky look at some stage, because I, I definitely would have had a quaddy on, so uh, I would have been checking the results from time to time. You guys used to do that at Carlton, didn't you? Johnson and Buckley and you guys. You'd, you'd have a bit of a punt while the game was on. Yeah, and normally the runner would uh, bring out the results and, and let us know how we're going or, or put some bets on for us at the time. So, uh, yeah, it was all good fun. Who do you reckon got best on the ground? Who do you reckon got the Brownlow votes that day? Oh, I'd have to say Plugger. Would have had to have been Plugger. Ten goals, seven. You, you'd definitely it get the three, wouldn't you? It was actually Brett Bowie who had ten disposals. He got the three votes. Um, Plugger got two votes and David Glasgow got one. Oh, I remember him getting cleaned up, so maybe you got maybe you got the sympathy <laughs> vote Bowser. for that. Yeah. yeah, I actually coached him down at Frankston, so he's a good guy too. How many Brownlow votes did you get over the years? Uh, not very many, and uh, probably just deserved because <laughs> I, I didn't take kindly to the umpires out in the football field too, very often, so I didn't really deserve any. Was the social club a, a bad or a good thing in your day at St Kilda? Oh, no. <laughs> probably a bit of both. Um, but it was, it was fantastic. good socially, but Oh, yeah, but it was fantastic so when, we, uh, when we won. You wouldn't get in the place. And they virtually carry you across the shoulders to get to the stage. That's how many people were there. But, but in, in saying that, you know, because we partied so much after a win, it, it probably affected us for, for the games after that. Well, you liked a, a cleansing ale after a game, didn't you? Yeah, well, you had to replenish the, uh, the, the what you lost out on the field. So uh, we'd normally have a can or two when we got back into the rooms. And um, that changed, though, didn't it? The, towards the end of your career, the club started getting a bit health conscious. Yeah, I think 1992 was my last year, and I remember after a game, and I walked in and seen seen the lollies, and I was looking for a green can, and um, I thought, you know, my time in football is just about finished here. So uh, it was definitely showing me that the, the game had changed. How do you think it's changed, Dean? You're still in touch with all the footballers. How's it changed the footy in the last 10 or 15 years? Yeah, we probably couldn't do the things that we used to do and uh, it'd be put across the, the front page of the, of the, of the paper. But, um, you know, it's probably it's changed for the better. Um, players are role models and they can't do the things that we used to do and, uh, and understand that. And, um, and obviously they also get paid a lot more than, than we did, so that comes with a, a bit of, um, you know... Well... I mean, the, the, the money the money'd be great, you know, but um, well, probably the only difference with me is my ex-wife would have a bigger house, but um, <laughs> that's about the only difference I'd have in life. But uh, uh, overall, look, I mean, we, we had 20 for bowlers, and, you know, back in our day. Yeah. David Rees-Jones and Dean Rice, thank you both for remembering a great Carlton St Kilda game and uh, the glory days of Plugger. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Neil. You. Ah, yeah, some good memories there, particularly for Saints fans. Unfortunately, Tony Lockett managed just 11 games in 1989 and St Kilda missed the finals. Amazingly, though, he still managed to boot 78 goals. Just think, maybe 150 had he played the full season. And what a way to get Saints fans in the mood anyway for today's big match. Next up, it's St Kilda and North Melbourne when Sunday footy continues on 7.